above your head. Okay, Five all right, seconds. okay, Five, okay, four. okay. Uh, the signature opening now. How you doing, Zach? Episode three of the AGT podcast. How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? Not bad. So we've, we've had some feedback from the last episode. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, one of the main ones was that you need to start smiling a bit more. Yeah, I was quite, like, yeah, quite surprised myself to see how miserable I was. Yeah, when I watched that back, I was like, why. actually, was, was, did something happen to him? Well, I did uh, fail on my motorbike test, actually. So we yeah. touched on that and I passed it last well, Thursday, actually. So, you mate. know... Well, feeling but, good yeah, today yeah. so it should be some more smiles but you know we'll see yeah so uh the agt podcast we're in our third episode now we're going to be touching today on some football news so especially the the title charge and, and what's been happening in the champions league uh we've got some really important training news especially the relaunching of the jordan bread fours and in music of course we've got three songs that are coming out of the oven that was another bit of feedback that we got from the comments last week. So, I was right, as expected. Yeah, yeah well, we'll see. So that's uh, that's all to look forward to on the AGT podcast. The AGT podcast, where the listener comes first. Okay, then, it's been another busy fortnight of football uh, in this country and across Europe, of course, in the Champions League. My team, Liverpool, are in another European semi-final. How do you feel about that, Alex? Uh, to be honest, it was a piece of piss. Porto really didn't put up a fight. I thought they would after we drubbed them last year. Uh, we've got Barcelona in the semis. Hopefully, I'm going to be at Anfield for the second leg. Uh, and my honest opinion, if anyone can beat Barcelona, it's us. So, Ooh, um, yeah, well, to be they, fair. they haven't, they don't, you don't play a team like Liverpool in Spain, do you? No. They're not pressy pressure, they're more relaxed. You don't go, you don't go to uh, Anfield in Spain, do you really? Well, exactly, you know. geographically, that's quite impossible. Well, but yeah. Liverpool and Chelsea, both in the European uh, semi-final, we forgot to say that. Yeah. And the lesser brother of, of the two. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Europa League, the poor yeah. man's Champions League. Yeah. Could be an Arsenal-Chelsea final, how Could do you feel be. about that? Uh, it, I mean, the top four race has become so congested in the last few weeks. It's like uh, nobody wants it, no, in my opinion. Like, no, 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 Christ, no, I don't want uh, European football. So, no, yeah, I mean, I'm feeling pretty nervous, but I'm actually hopeful. I think if there's a game, if there's a way for us to clinch um, Champions League next year, it's going to be the Europa. I, don't, I really don't see us ending on a high in the league. I think Make a prediction now for third and fourth place, right? Of, um, contra- oh, it's killing me. Okay, Five all right, seconds. okay, Five, okay, four, okay, four, okay. Three, uh, Arsenal third, two. Tottenham fourth. Right, well, I'm going to go Tottenham third, Arsenal fourth. Okay. And Chelsea in uh, um, fifth and United in sixth. Fair enough. But, of course, it's the Manchester derby. Tomorrow we film on a Tuesday and we go out live on a Sunday. As a Liverpool fan, I'm supporting United for obvious reasons. Yep. I need City to drop points. Absolutely. Um, the title charge is looking like it's literally going to go down to the last minute. This is the title the in this game. Yeah, this is the title in this game. Is, mate. Um, you're not wrong. Assuming you guys don't balls it. Yeah, well, that, that could also happen. But, I mean, mm. Liverpool, since we've last recorded as well, we played Chelsea. <sighs> Salah, we have to? absolute wonder have to? goal uh, um, in uh, that game to settle the score. We played also uh, Southampton away, and then of course we just beat Cardiff away. Chelsea, oh, I mean again, up and down, consistently inconsistent. Yeah, really. That's what we said. Callum earlier. Hudson Odoi is probably gonna gonna be out now for a Ruptured few months. Ruptured Achilles, devastated. Um, devastated. So that, that is a big shame for England as well. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's a roundup of our team. Should we get into Derby Day? That oh. Should we get into Derby Day then and now? I think so. I think so. What are we looking at this week, mate? We are looking at the infamous North London Derby. Let's go. Is your brain doing your head in? Was last summer's harvest a little less fruitful than you'd hoped? How about your chickens? Worried about their scaly leg mite? It doesn't have to be this way. Head on down to Big Al's Agricultural Warehouse, where the smiles aren't just a promise, they're a guarantee. So then, Derby Day, then and now, is a very popular part of the show that we like to do. Uh, essentially, we profile one of the major derbies in world football. We've had the Northwest Derby, we've had 
the uh, El Clasico, El Clasico. Yeah. and this week is the North London Derby. We take a look at the kit maker of the time from 1994 all the way to 2019. 25 years, 94 of course, the year that we were both born, and 2019 is now. So we look at the kit makers, how they've changed over yep. time, the sponsors, the top league scorer, and the finishing positions as well. Uh, so if you want to start with 94, we're Absolutely. talking about Arsenal and Tottenham. Yeah, well, I mean, surprise, surprise, with the standings on the uh, doors at the end of the season, Arsenal came fourth. Uh, so they've kind of been uh, setting that trend for a few yeah, decades they like now. Forth, they? they do like that fourth spot. But they had a respectable 71 points and scored 53 goals and only conceded 28. So I think oh, actually for a campaign, it's pretty oh, decent uh, and had some merit to it. Whereas Tottenham, I mean, Spurs fans, cover your ears now. Uh, it was an absolutely forgettable season. You guys came in at 15th, one place behind Chelsea and 14th, I might add, as well. Um, and actually, really, if you look at goals scored, you scored more goals than Arsenal. You bagged 54, but conceded a woeful 59. So kind of easy to see where it went wrong for you. Um, for you guys with that one um with the actual matches um you guys uh with, with when it was played at arsenal it was a one-all draw but then when uh, arsenal visited white hart lane ian wright managed to uh do the old smash and grab with a one nil goal when it came to kits arsenal as you'll be able to see now were sponsored by jvc and had nike as a maker which is pretty cool uh spurs again sort of sums up their season Sponsored by Holston and made by Umbro. I do so, love a Holston, mate. Yeah. Nice beer. Yeah, fair enough. Lager. You know. Good lager. It wasn't on my radar, actually. So, yeah, fair enough. Holston. Anyway, um, 82, what was it, was it looking bench. like in uh, So, in 2019, 2019, Arsenal, guess where they are, mate? Oh, I wonder. Fourth, mm. uh, as they always will be. Um, <laughs> which, actually, to be fair to them, is a great achievement. After Credit where it's due. Has left and Emery's come in. Um, and he may be able to secure fourth and the Europa League final, maybe even win it, um, something he's done with Sevilla three times. Uh, Tottenham are only one point ahead of Arsenal in third at this stage. They're on 67 points to Arsenal, 66. So like Zach was saying, very tight down there at the minute. Pause. Um, both have got four <laughs> games to go. Arsenal this season have scored 68 with Aubameyang sharing the top spot with 19 goals with Aguero and Salah. Uh, Spurs, on the other hand, they've only got 64 Kane is the top scorer with 17. Of course, he's been injured for a while, uh, so he probably won't add to that. That's probably the no, score he's out of the, the rest season. of the season, yeah. In terms of the kit makers, now this was a beautiful kit. Um, Arsenal, uh, I think, have smashed it this year with, with their last Puma edition before their sponsorship runs out, and they go to Adidas next season until 2020. Four. Um, the last time they had Adidas kits was 1994, mm. um, which is funny because the kit sponsor will continue to be Fly Emirates. It's been Fly Emirates for some time now. And Spurs have had Nike making their kits since 2017, a definite step up since Under Armour. Um, and with AIA, the, uh, the kit sponsor still, uh, but who knows? This could be the kit that reaches a Champions League final. Oh. I mean, I, I just to butt in there, I, I realised I didn't actually mention the top scorers in 94. So just quickly yep. turning back the clock. Um, again, I mean, this goes to show that Spurs had a really fantastic season in 94 in terms of goals scored. Uh, Jürgen Klinsmann was actually the fifth top scorer in the Premier League um, and scored 21 goals. And Ian Wright came in with 18 goals. So there you go. Yeah, well, that was Derby Day then and now. Would you like to learn Spanish? We can offer you an intensive five-week course where you can go from Del Boy to Costa del Sol. At only 999, you can learn phrases like Liverpool es el mejor equipo del mundo and Nunca caminarás solo. For 10% off, code Despacito in checkout this week only. Hasta luego. Okay, that time that we all know and love. AGT's Oven, the time where we take three hot tunes out of the oven as was discussed last week so we're taking them out there are three tunes that have really caught our ears uh this week and uh of course the link to the real agt's oven spotify playlist is in the description below so the first one that we're taking out of the oven this week is loose ends by loyal Karner and georgia smith Ooh, yeah i just wish you knew oh. Song. Lovely song, uh, typical Karna. Yeah, think. just really. Heartbreaking, you, I've never heard him shout. Yeah, I mean, me and you have yeah, seen him live actually. Yeah. 
um, supporting Liam Gallagher, didn't of course, they? Of course, yeah. 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 Like, the like, good thing about Loyal is you can't really put them in the same box as the UK rap scene or or you know drill not that he's a drill artist at all but you never no. see um him you know talking about the same things that a lot of these uk rappers do he talks about sort of raw emotions yeah and feelings. absolutely but, but what i love about him is his temperament yeah never shouts he gets his message across clearly uh and genuinely he just seems like a really nice dude obviously georgia smith is completely stunning yeah uh yeah. i would let her yeah, let's talk about her musical yeah. merits, yeah? Oh, insane singer. Yeah. Her voice is, is silky. Yeah, um, silky to listen to. Um, It's like milk just running into your ear. Mm, honey and um, cream and all sorts. Yeah, well, yeah. less of the cream. Um, but yeah, Loyal Karna, Loose Ends. His new album is out now. Go and check that out as well. Liverpool fan as well, so that's oh, always good. Oh, yeah. It's all getting um, so yeah, Loose Ends, a song that we definitely co-sign here on the AGT podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second song that we're taking out of the oven this week is J Huss's Daily Duffy. From my adolescent, I never learned my lesson. If my name was Smith, they have to add a Wesson. See my aggression, I left a bad impression. Self-medicate myself through my depression. All I need... Now, let me give you a little story about J Huss. So, J Huss went inside to prison, that is. Uh, in around November, he got eight months, served four, and is now out again. He recorded his Daily Duffy, which is a freestyle series on Grind Daily, way before he went to prison. Right. Um, and he's come out and they've just dropped it instantly. He actually came out of prison, went straight to the Barbers, and then went straight to the O2 to walk out for Drake. Yeah, I mean... I mean, talk about, like... I mean, I've never been to prison. Hope, Hopefully I never do. You probably will, mate. Yeah, probably. Um, but, I mean, what a day that is. You come out, you're looking fresh, and you step on stage with Drake. So this Daily Duffy, I think it broke GRM's uh, record, actually, of a million views to the quickest. I think that was views the or streams? Was this on YouTube? This or... was YouTube. Okay, um, nice. Subsequently, it went on Spotify, mm. and you can check it in the playlist. But the video itself, I think it got a million streams in, in like, 1.3 days or something. He's hot. Which right is now, a record. What do you think about Daily Duffy itself? Yeah, no, decent. I was um, saying to you earlier, I gave it a listen after you recommended it, and it's just... Uh, he spits venom, doesn't he? He spits he's, venom. He's, he's, I really like the camera work on the song because mm-hmm. you get um, the visual aspect coming into play as well. It's always Kirks, nice. I think, was the videographer on that one. So big up Kirks. Um, and yeah, Jay House is back, man. Summer's back. Get him on stage at as many festivals as possible. And yeah, keep making smashing music, my bro. The third song uh, that is coming out of AGT's oven this week is a song called Conversation. By a catfish in the bottle, man. I'm a perfect conversation. Looks it in her eyes. And now I even say it. It's all time. A band that you and I love. I've interviewed them. You've interviewed yeah. them. Um, how was cool that guys. when you first met them? Oh, Van. Well, it was only with Van. We were on their tour bus. This was back the year just before they went huge. I think it was like 2015. Yeah. yeah. Um, they were just about to re- release The Balcony. Her first right. album, I mean, amazing debut album, and uh, we went on their tour bus. And at the time, he was just so humble. He had really long hair at the time. Um, he was, just, he was actually even then, he was a bit of a diva on stage. Yeah. He was really giving the sound technicians some jip about his you know, guitar levels. But he was awesome. He was, I didn't feel like a, it was good as well because I didn't really know them. If I interviewed them now, I probably would, it would the pressure would have got to me because I love their music so yeah. much. So I would have just fangirled. But it, it was literally just like me and you chatting now. He was just, he gave some good advice to sort of aspiring student musicians because we kind of wanted to, it was for Express Radio, the uh, student uh, radio I used to at Cardiff. It's, yeah, one of my, obviously, one of the coolest things I've done. Mm-hmm. Really enjoyed it. The song itself, I think, is stronger than their first couple of singles off the album. Mm, that's a big shout. It I think Long Shot's better. But I'm, I'm, I'm putting Conversation above Long Shot. I think, you know what? I have to big up my sister on this one, actually, because I never heard of Catfish in the Bottom Moon until mm. my sister schooled me on them. Yeah. Like you were saying, about 2015, yep. four years ago, she's she's been to like eight of their gigs. Yeah. Met we went to the same gig. And we yeah. discovered this on your birthday, oh, really? and it blew up both our minds. We were both at the same gig in 2015. In nah, she was at this festival that I was at. Really? Like, properly mental, mate, the chances of it. Like, and it wasn't even that just... big crowd, so it was probably in it. Fucking. Yeah. 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 Well, less of that. Careful. Yeah, that's a slippery. Really um, so, yeah, those are the three songs that you can take away home with you. Give a listen and let us know what you think about them in the comments below. 
Um, what have you been listening to, mate? Well, there's only one single I want to big up this week, and that is Doubt It, just released uh, fresh from Amazon's, uh, the Amazon, sorry, and it's just, it's an absolutely titanic song. It reminds me of Led Zeppelin. It starts with this absolutely crackling electric riff, and it's just, it's just rock and roll, rock and really, roll. really decent finest. rock and roll at its finest, which you don't get enough of these days. Um, they've got a new album coming out in the next few weeks, so 2019 just continues to go from good to show. Oh. Big time. They're not a Glastonbury though, so I'm pretty gutted about that. I'm hoping I'll catch them on the festival circuit because those are usually the most yeah. rowdy, full-on gigs. So, uh, but yeah, I, if you haven't heard it, check it out. They also released another single recently called Mother. I'm not sure which is better, but they're both easily eight or nine out of tens for me. Also, I want to say a massive shout out to Lona. Um, I was at their gig last yeah. week. Apologies, um, boys, that I did not make it. Yeah, Zach was too busy failing and passing. Well, his, no, uh, I missed the gig to pass the test. So, if you, um, wanna... but if you wanted to to know how the night went, I mean, pretty good. <laughs> Ceasefire, Shangri-La, She's With Me, Big Mouth, um, a really good vibe in there. Peter Crouch was there. Yeah, you was just rubbing it in now, um, Saw Crouchy. That's not your life. <laughs> um, Got a t-shirt, paid for it as well. And yeah. I paid for the tickets. That's what you should do to your local musician. No yeah. one should be asking for freebies. There we you go. pay your hard-earned money, and that's how they stay on stage. Because yeah. if you don't, they're down the job centre, aren't they? Yeah, um, true. All right, cheers. The AGT Podcast, where the listener comes first. Moving on to the world of sneakers, there's some massive drops coming up. Oh, um, huge drops. To be honest, mate, I cannot wait for the Jordan 4 breads to drop. Yeah. Um, I, I was speaking to someone the other day about what would my top three trainers of all time be. Yeah. Uh, and I actually put the Jordan 3 black cements in at number one. Mm-hmm. But the Jordan 4 breads for me, only because I don't actually have them, mm. I've like wanted these shoes since I'd say 2011. Right. So it's the fact you haven't had them that's made you come out. Had them. Exclusivity. Um, and the thing is like, they're very rare. To, you, you can't really just go out and buy these shoes. Nike no. or the Jordan brand have to restock them and put a big campaign behind them. But they're coming out on May the 4th. Um, May the 4th be with you. Yeah, and Hopefully you. it's with me on that day as yeah. I wake up early and, and head over to the sneakers app. Uh, and try and get a pair. I'm, I'm guessing they're going to be around 180 mark. That's normally what the mm. OGs come back in at. Yeah. Um. So I mean, it's going to be a pretty difficult cop. I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm, I'm acting yeah. like I'm going to get a pair yeah. like that. Um. I'll probably go a 0.5 size up. Yeah. Just because it's quite a, a, a quite a well fitted shoe, so you, you sure. want some some give. Sure. And also, if those toenails get extra long, you know you can. Uh, Lovely. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't know about that. Yeah. Um, Degenerate. But yeah, when the Jordan 4 uh, breads come out, I'm going to try my best to get them. It's the biggest drop of the year for me, in my opinion. Yeah. And I cannot wait to get them on my feet. Nice. That's very cool, man. Speaking of great drops, on Saturday the 13th, I mean, there's quite a cool story behind this trainer. So it's the Nike Air Max 97 London Summer of Love. And basically what happened is Nike put on this competition where they tried to, well, not tried, they got um, a Nikon Air contest where they got designers from, I think, seven or eight cities around the world um, to design a sneaker for this summer to drop that kind of embodies the spirit of the city that they're from. Mm. Um, now, interestingly, Great idea, to be fair, it is yeah. really cool. I love it. Really? Um, now, the girl that won the uh, competition for London I actually went to school with, didn't really hang out with her, but she's you called... Went to school with her? I went to school with her. She no. was in my year. Yeah, we, we never really hung out, but she's called Jasmine so Lasso. Can you get a couple of pairs? Well, let's see what we can do. Yeah, 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 I'll, I'll give a little dm um yeah but i mean i just love the sneaker that she's done um it's a really lovely story um essentially it's uh, what inspired her was um, living in london and it being kind of the vibe that she's going for the city of love uh it's actually a personal memory her first date with her girlfriend on primrose hill and just i mean you'll see the picture of the sneaker now but look at that isn't I mean, that just it's... like it's one of it. those trainers that you see someone wearing and you might think to yourself, God, I, to, I don't think I'd get away with them. Mm. Until you put them on your feet, I reckon. It's just sunshine, isn't it? Yeah, it screams I think like, it screams metropolitanism. Festivals, sunshine, yeah. love. I mean, it's London summer of love. It's nailed. Another thing that's definitely worth talking about in the sneaker world recently uh, is the new Spring Summer 19 Alexander Wang collection. <laughs> Um, he's dropped five creps in the Wang body. Um, 
collection this yeah. year. Uh, I mean, some of them, if you look at these, for example, you'll see them on the screen now. Yeah. Look at the cloud technology mm. there. Uh, and then if you go down there, a bit more risque, really, I probably yeah. wouldn't wear them myself. Yeah, buffy, um, of course, Alexander Wang has done so many um, high profile collaborations that he probably is at the point now where he can dare a little bit with the designs. Mm -hmm. um, look at that i mean mm. it's it's hit and miss really but yeah some of them are beautiful and some of them i definitely want to wear uh and take that 80s theme back mm -hmm. uh to the 2020s as we almost touch in that was just weird yeah very weird um alexander wang of course takes a lot of inspiration from his from the 80s the casual yeah. wear and you can definitely see that in this collection all over it uh it's very much the 1980s club leisure movement mm -hmm. um vibe he goes for and yeah Definitely looking to buy a pair myself. Um, and yeah. Cool. Cool story, Alex. What would they wear? Uh, a section in the podcast where we talk about someone who's been in the news and based on their personality and what they've been through, we work out what trainers they would wear. So yeah. who have we got, Zach? This uh, he's a bit of a con controversial figure, as I'm sure most of you will know. Julian Assange, the man that about was him, yeah. behind WikiLeaks and had been boarded up in the Ecuadorian embassy since 2012. You imagine um, the amount of pizzas he must have ordered well, to that I, place. I don't know, we touched on this several times. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, actually, yeah, what would he eat? What would you eat for seven years? It'd have to be takeaways every day. Yeah. But then he, he did come out looking... Anyway, he he's didn't very like eating a lot of yeah, pizzas. He's very with no. um, But the question I'm putting to you is, what would he wear? Julian Assange, right. So when he came out, he was looking very withered, um, very geog out. geography teacher yeah. right? Yeah. So I remember being at uni, a lot of the IT tech guys would wear this shoe. A lot of, going even further back, a lot of the geography teachers of the world, you know I'm talking to, you mentioned geography College, teachers a lot, um, you? would wear this shoe as well. It's the A6 Gel Nimbus, um, mainly a running shoe, I'm not going to lie. Uh, those who are into their creps and into their trainers will say the cardinal sin is to wear running shoes with jeans. Um, and he strikes me as the kind of guy, I mean, he's in jail now, but he strikes me as the kind of guy that would wear a boot cut jean uh, with a A6 trainer. I'm gonna go with the Gel Nimbus. Um, a great running trainer, don't get me wrong. I'm not slagging them off at all. He won't be running much well, anymore, will he? Will he? Running, <laughs> he'll be running to the bloody... I mean, we joke, but it is kind yeah, of... Yeah, he's in jail for a long time. Yeah. A long time, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, A6 Gel Nimbus. That's what I reckon Assange would wear. Nice. Would you like a giraffe? How about in a box? Log on to AGT's PetsOverNight.com and we'll deliver any animal you want directly to your door in under 12 hours. AGT's PetsOverNight.com, turning your animal dreams into reality. My favourite part of the podcast, it was such a success last week. We had a lot of people saying how much they enjoyed this. Don't laugh at Dad, the time on the podcast where we, we give each other three jokes and three accents. Um, dad jokes uh, and accents to, to just add a little bit of spice onto it, really. So I'm going to give you my laptop, you give me yours. Yeah. Uh, Please go first. So I go first? Yeah, yeah it's my first. podcast. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. So I'm basically, I've never seen these jokes. Um, I'm going to press next and I'm going to see an accent and I'll tell you the accent and then we'll go into the joke. The aim of the game is to not laugh. Okay. So let's see how we get on. So this is Manchester. So it's very like, you know, Fucking hell, you know what I mean? My bastard son came up to me earlier and told me to stop singing Wonderful. I said, maybe. <laughs> you fucked up. My bastard son came up to me earlier and told me to stop singing Wonderful. I said, maybe. That's it. That's the delivery that was good. for me. That was the good, first time was a fucking because I was joke, laughing mate. quite a lot. Sorry, mate. Welsh. That was good. Fucking Welsh again. I Welsh, it worked so well the... last week. Yeah, it worked so well last it. week. You can, mate. Welsh, I'm from Wales. Go on. <laughs> Why well, you just talk to Pepper <laughs> bottle? <laughs> Fuck it out! Because his wife died. Wow, Ooh. really uh turn that up a bit. Straight in me. this week. Uh, you just wanna Why say... does Dr. Pepper <laughs> bottle? Because his wife died. <laughs> Fuck it out, mate. Yeah. My next one is Glasgow, so uh, I hate your bust out there. I'm gonna rob you, I'm gonna kill you. Uh, yeah. I know a guy who used to perform circumcisions. The money wasn't great, but at least he got to keep the tips. Oh, for fuck's sake. That yeah, is well, foul. It's just disgusting. Oh, really. Cockney. Oh, fucking Cockney, mate. Isn't it? Fucking 
What's it called? Wheeler and Dealer. I'm not a fucking yeah. Wheeler and Dealer. I'm a fucking football manager. Remember that? Yeah, Harry Redknapp. I know a lot of jokes about unemployed people, but none of them work. <laughs> shameful, that one. Absolutely shameful. I laughed. Yeah, someone has to. Next, for me, Posh Victorian. <laughs> Give me something you're made. You're a lot posh. Well, you know, you know, well, fucking more <laughs> posh than you are. Oh, like Posh Victorian. Well, you know, you're all the one. Bloody, uh, fucking, uh, yeah, bloody, you scared of them. Bloody, you bloody, you uh, bloody, bloody, uh, bloody, uh, bloody, 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 bloody,